Welcome back, welcome back guys to my channel and welcome back for another episode of Dreamers Den Podcast. If you're here for a second, third, fifteenth time, thank you so much for coming back. And if this is your first time, welcome and thank you so much for joining today. I am Danielle Towner of DreamWork Creatives and I'm co-author of the Mompreneur Manual and I am here to help you to build a profitable online business to monetize your content and to make sales from all of this but i'm also here to help moms stay on the right track with monetizing their superpowers and with building a balanced business that's a mission of chastity's in mind but today we want to talk about how to avoid procrastination as a mompreneur that's something that a lot of people struggle with and a lot of people um, including me, have struggled with and overcoming. Like you are talking to the recovering queen of procrastination. So I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know and what I have experienced. So today I want to share with you some tips that have helped me to overcome and avoid and prevent all those things to get over procrastination and to get stuff done to be productive and to get to this money generating activity this cash generating activity so let's get on with it the first one i want to talk about is don't overload your schedule so that's one thing that we tend to do as human beings but also as moms like a lot of us our mind and our goals and our ambitions are running faster than um our capacity is and so you want to take a step back and slow down and be realistic about what you can handle you know your unique family size and your unique family setup and your responsibilities some of you are single parents some of you are married some people have a partner and some of you are you know doing this thing on your own without help at all without co-parenting or any of that so you know your unique setup and you know what your capacity is you know your schedule you know your kids routine you know your responsibilities so based on that that is how you should set up your schedule or your daily plans um, and your activities so being realistic about that even if it's one working on one thing a week towards your business depending on this business if this business is your main source of income or not and if that will be enough like working on one thing a day towards your business that may have to be enough or be suitable until you can get somebody else on your team to help you out with that or until we start working on delegating and automating some of those responsibilities but you know what that number looks like whether it's one or whether it's five a day five tasks a day and the size of those every day but don't you know just pile everything up um because that can be discouraging you're not going to get to it. it can be discouraging and looking at that just looking at that list can cause you to delay it or put it off or just not feel the energy to do it so you know protect all of that by creating a re realistic schedule number two i would say is to focus on one project at a time and by projects i mean that doesn't mean like you have to have just one project for this week the projects depending on the size of them you could be working on multiple projects in a week but that doesn't mean you focus on every one of them at a time so let me give you an example so for instance this week my main focus or my main projects were to to batch my content so that consisted of me you know doing the the actual text of the content and also doing some designs creating some videos and things like that so that was one thing another thing was to create a sales page and the last thing is to get our heart back the balance your mom power planner get that in the hardback version because we have it in one place but we're switching it to another to make it more affordable for you guys so those are on my top three of the projects that i'm focusing on this week so i got the content behind me so now i can focus on the next project which would be i'm um, getting the sales page done so i focused on one i saw that to completion and then i went to the next project all in the same week but just not jumping back and forth and not overwhelming my mind and myself and trying to do everything at the same time so if you zone in and focus on that one project and go to the next one after you get that done 
then you know it just works out better for you and it doesn't again it doesn't make you feel overwhelmed or pressured and cause that procrastination cause you to do nothing because you don't know which direction to go number three would be to break those large projects down into smaller steps so that you don't again feel that overwhelmed so in order to get those projects done just like i broke down some of the steps that it takes for me to create content um write those steps down break those steps down in whatever you use for your project management i use trello there are oodles of options out there and they are growing every day just like all the online tools and I, I a lot of them are great i've heard a lot of great things about them i personally have experience with trello and i have experience with one called teamwork both of them are great i'm just going for what i'm used to and what continues to grow with me which is trello but also people have talked about asana dupsado um i just heard about that one recently haven't tried that one out Airtable, a fellow content creator that a reliable trustworthy one um naturally madison she told me about notion she loves notion so all of those options are out there for you but whatever you use for your project management use that system to break down those large tasks those large projects down into smaller steps and that will fur further help you not to get overwhelmed because even though you're seeing these steps, you know that the end goal of that, your vision for that is the, the completion of this larger project. So as you tick these off, as you check them off your checklist or however you do it, as you move it to done, I like the feeling of like clicking and moving it to done. This step, then you know this is building up to finishing this larger project and you feel accomplished not only at the end of it, but along the way. And so that motivates you to get started going back to that feeling of having a sense of accomplishment and getting something done. Number four, have an accountability partner to check in with you. That can be different depending on what your need is or what satisfies you in that area. It could be a friend, it could be a sibling, it may be a coach or a business partner, it could be your spouse or your companion, it could even be your child. Like my son, he's three years old and when I'm working out, he's standing there dancing along with me, you know, participating in the workout. And he's also, you know, saying, go mommy, go mommy. So to me, that's motivational and uh, and it holds me accountable because he sees what I'm doing and one day he's going to put that into practice too. So that's accountability for me. Also, um, my co-author um, and my co-partner in business, Chastity Parrish of Roadmap to Balance for Moms. We are each other's accountability partner. She has more than one. She's also a life coach, but we check on each other often. We meet up to do different tasks related to our business. We meet up to do lives. And so that's holding each other accountable because we depend on each other to get things done. But we check in on each other about our life, about how we're doing, how are the kids, like well, how is your week? And you know, we can talk about the good and the bad. We can be real, be raw, be authentic about it. You know, I didn't have a good day. My kid was sick. I had to do this. I fell off with the plan. I got to get back on track, whatever it is. But we hold each other accountable. We check in. We see if we, each other are all right. And we see how things are going towards those goals that we've communicated to each other that we have. Even if it's like your alarm clock, you know, you can set an alarm clock or you can set a reminder in your phone and you can set it to say whatever you want it to say. Like it could be a positive affirmation. And that's, you know, looking at that, that's a check in. That's that's holding you accountable. That's motivating you to get started and keep it going. If you have like books or, or music, that's, you know, it's a non conventional, non traditional accountability partner but it's still something that's holding you accountable and checking you in and just boosting you along the way to not get complacent to not procrastinate to get started right now today yesterday to get started yesterday so you need these things that are going to be brutally honest with you and kick you in the butt when you need it um because we all sometimes need that kick in the butt to keep it going like i think we all have moments of 
you know, whether it's discouragement or whatever it is that's causing us to get off track. We all have those moments. Number five, I would say, is to keep that vision in mind. Keep your why in mind. When you are feeling the spirit of procrastination coming in mind, you have to keep that end goal in mind and keep your why in mind. My why, one of my biggest whys is my son. Not only is he looking up to me, but he depends on me. I can't afford to be procrastinating and sleeping on him and his future and the generational wealth that I want to build for him and for my kids, kids, kids. That is what I keep in mind and just also like the personal and, and business goals that I have. If you're not doing anything towards that on a minute basis, on an hour basis, on a daily basis, continually feeding yourself and, and continually taking that action, then, you know, if you're not doing anything, then it's not going to happen. It's just a dream. Keep that in mind. Keep the vision in mind and keep what the purpose of you taking action and not procrastinating is. Keep that in mind. If you go through these steps, if you take these things and apply them and you're still finding yourself challenged with procrastination, if you're still finding yourself regularly being a procrastinator, taking on that crown of procrastination, the queen of procrastination, then you need to do some soul searching. Take some time to have some quiet time to yourself. Do some soul searching and think about what's blocking you or causing you to have that delay or rescheduling. And think about it on a project by project basis. So if it's a particular project that's causing you to like keep delaying it or rescheduling it, like think about what's blocking you. You may be having some type of fear or doubt that you're not thinking about but subconsciously you may be having some type of fear or some doubt underlying that's causing you to procrastinate on that project you may just not have the motivation you may just not be interested in doing it you may just not want to do it it's not that you're lazy it's not that you're incapable it's just that you just don't want to do that you may not have the right mental headspace at that time to do it and so you may just need to table it or put it on your your dream list or just put it back on your list for a later time. Let's go back through these. Number one is don't overload your schedule. Number two is to focus on one project at a time. Number three, break down those large projects into smaller steps so that you don't feel overwhelmed. Number four is to have an accountability partner to check on you. And number Five is to keep your vision, keep the full picture, the end goal, and your why in mind. And then a bonus was to do some soul searching if you're still having a problem with procrastination to see if there is like an underlying issue or something blocking you and causing you to delay or reschedule those projects. So... Hope this was helpful for you if it was or even if it wasn't. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this podcast today. And also if you found it helpful and you want to keep coming back for more, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you're notified. You're one of the first to know the next time I drop a podcast or a tutorial. Thank you guys for listening.